Hello, people. Lovely people. Lovely people. We're going to hit this article right here. It's called Shear Force Engineering. Shear Force Engineering. Shear caps versus panels versus column capitals. This is a, looks like a model shoot, but this is a well known um, underground parking garage. Very stubby columns here. And then this tapered, beautifully tapered system. Okay. I'm going to get back to that. Oh, well, maybe I won't, but just wanted to show you this is part of their, their thumbnail, their uh, article. What is punching shear? Uh, right here in the article. Let me zoom out a bit. Each concrete extrusion mentioned in our introduction shear cap. Sorry, I'm reading from my phone also, so I have to squint a bit. Uh, shear cap versus drop panel versus, I can do that. Enhances a slab punching shear capacity to some degree. Mm -hmm. um, it enhances a slab's punching shear capacity to some degree. Well, that's that's a, 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 a diversion of a bit. Punching shear is a phenomenon. Phenomenal. 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 Phenomenon. Phenomenal. Phenomenous. Anyway, I'm having fun, right? Where a concentrated force on a slab causes a supported element of a support or a supporting element to physically punch through the full depth of the slab. If the slab is not uh, proportioned th thick enough and or the vertical concentrated load, well, I want you to understand what they said there. The vertical, 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 what's that word? Vertical concentrated load is too high. This results in a punching shear, shear failure. And then we look at their diagrams here. Punching shear. Punching shear crack pattern. There are the arrows. And what I'm saying is the arrows are 100% wrong. 100% wrong. Now, it, it just can't fail this way. It has to be a rotation, a sagging that causes a rotation. That rotation would cause a tension up here, a compressive down here. Inside this connection here, tension up here. That's the way the rotation is. This one, they just have it just going straight down, just breaking free, free and falling down, as I state, like slipping on a condom, if you will. They're just having it do, doing that. Um, safe construction. All right. The punching shear capacity of a slab can be increased by introducing one or more of the following elements to the slab design. So how do you make it stronger? Well, the one or more of the slab design. Increase the cross-sectional area of the concrete shear interface by increasing the slab thickness locally at the column. Okay, this is this part I just read here. So increase this thickness. All right, now remember, you guys can grab a pen and a piece of paper and punch right through it. And then grab, you know, 40, a ream of paper and then try to punch through that. You see, you're only going to go so deep. You're only going to go so deep. Now, that doesn't mean if you go 30 pages in or 10 pages in, you say, we well, only need 11 pages to, to do it. Keep in mind, the other, the backing of the other pages made that ream stiffer and stronger. So, um, it was like having a base, a, a base on, on an EFA on behind the paper backing it. So you still need that backing. So if you think of it that way, all right, so here's the ream of paper and here's the pen introduced and you get that much depression. You won't really get too much penetration. Maybe you'll break the first page or two, but you get that. Now here are the other, uh, you know, the fifth pack of 50, let's call it. There's uh, uh, 40 sheets left. All right, you just can't do 41 or it would just, this last sheet would just punch through also. It's got to displace, all right? So just like soil, like a foundation, just like a foundation, that punching has to dis... Uh, okay, so let's do a column here. And let's call this soil here. Well, there's a, there's a, there's a, uh, a zones for the displacing of the soil that would, would, res would stop this from sinking anymore, if you will, to pressing inward. Those zones, I have it like this at a 45, but in reality... It's a taper. It's like, you know, 45, and then there's, 
you know, so it might be 60% of the load up there at the first, uh, you know, first three feet. And then it changes to, you know, 10% down to zero down here somewhere. So the, it's, a, it's a gradient of, of load. It's just not, you know, divided by the distance, divided by the load, and you get to equal percentages. No, it, it's, it's initially, the, the, it's at the top. That gives you what? A larger surface area to then transfer the loads. So this is the larger surface area. And that's why your reduction happens. And you get, you get this reduction and then down to, well, zero, where you can walk underneath of it like a cave or drive underneath it like a tunnel. All right, so let's go back to this the, the comment here where they state, increasing the cross-section area. So now you understand that a little better. We'll stop it from doing this, which is which is false. It's false because it, this is just not falling down to the ground. There's deflection in this deck. And if there wasn't deflection in this deck, well, they, they don't have it connected over here. I want you then to connect it. It's going to be connected, unless it's a cantilever. It's going to be connected. And now you can connect it to the surface of a wall if you like and call this a parapet wall. Um, let's do this. Let's run through it. All right. You, this just can't fall down here, can it? If it does that, we've got ourselves a, a arch, a arch, a, a rotation that way. And now it's hinged back here. It's also, remember my cantilever effect, you're also going to get some cantilever effect off of this wall. So it's going to be rigid there. So it just can't fail in this capacity. This is wrong, wrong. It's been wrong in engineering forever. And I've always seen it forever. It just pissed me off that... I'm finally coming out and just beating this up with everybody in the public to, to have at it. Have, engineers, have at this and tell me where you can see that this is correct and I am wrong. Debunk me. I obviously debunk other people. Have a little fun and debunk me. Come on up there. Debunk me on this one. Show me this is just falling straight down without a rotation. That this is just like somehow just magically just elevating itself down like an elevator. Just, just dropping down. These are wrong. These arrows are wrong. It's a rotation. It's a rotation. And again, you're going to get um, tension up top, compression at the bottom, which becomes a force multiplier action and helps uh, strip it from the rebar that goes across the top of here, right here, even faster. That's in other videos where I show that force multiplier effect. Let's get back to reading. Increasing the cross-section area of the concrete. So increasing it doesn't do anything. All you did to increase this to stop this from, uh, let me do this. I want you to see how increasing this, making this rigid. All you did was make this column, this column here, um, putting that capital on it. Let's call this the capital, right? This little design here where it didn't fracture there. Let's let's take a little liberty there. So all you did to it, all you did was. On, let me do this one. On the slabs, you on the punching shear that you see like this, it looks like a hammerhead left behind, and then it punch sheared all around, all around the column head. So let's look at the top of it, and it punch sheared all around like that. All right, let's call it. Let's do that. All you did was, as you look at this column down here, let me change colors. So all you did was increase made this so rigid up here that it just in essence just made the column wider that's in essence what you did you just made the column wider by making this so rigid that it won't deflect that this section will not deflect that it will stand proud and the rest of the deck around it will will punch shear around it will punch shear around it in reality the deflection had to take place. So here's your your, your capital. All right. Let's let me get out of this one and get you. Let me look at what. Let me see what else we can salvage from this. All right. You can come read these articles and look at this. You know what? I can use the one right here. So let's go to drawing. So all you did was make this section here more rigid. Okay. By default, it probably tapers out to here like this. It probably looks like that. Ah. And it probably would, would shear here, right? Fracture here. Uh, maybe even like that. Maybe just a hair behind it. 
but that's that's all you did. You made it so that that ream of paper is in his zone here. In his zone there, the stronger ream of paper, the the pencil head can't go through. It won't penetrate. You made it so it's so stiff that it will not penetrate with the load. And the load is the deck. The dead load of the deck, the planter boxes, whatever you want to put on top of there. Cars, vehicles, rainwater, whatever whatever you choose. The this is the top view at the looking I like to say top view and things like that. It helps people bird's eye view. I don't need to say it in architectural terms because I don't want to lose people on this. I want everyone to be able to understand it. So I'll say things like profile view. Everybody understands a profile, right? The person's face. All right, so that's that's better than using our other architectural terms. As you look at the, it says perimeter shear, uh, punching shear perimeter. This will be the column here in the middle. This will be that gradient I talk about until you get the until it starts able to flex. And if it flexes, it well, what happens if you have the rigid edge here? Let's do the column here. And let me just do a section of it. I'm sorry, a profile of it. Not a, so there's your column. If you make all this rigid here, and your deck is connected to the to the ends, the ends would be here. It would be would be the ends. Okay, let me do this. So the ends are are, are right here. If you make this this so rigid, and then you put it on top of this column, anything you connect to it. That is that is capable of deflecting. Let's do this. Let me take a little, little bit of liberty with a gap, and I'll put rebar across it, and then I'll give you a rotation arrow up top. So this is going. This this section here is going to rotate down like that. It's going to sag. Remember, it's sagging, sagging. When it sags, it puts tension on the top steel. Compression on the bottom steel, which they'll tell you, engineering will tell you, it's tension on the bottom and compression on the top. Well, I'm telling you that that's engineering defect 101 for me. That's just training in school that's going over and over and shared for 40, 50 years. It's just wrong. All right. It's not the true behavior. It's wrong and it just gets going on and on and on it's like gravity. Okay. Gravity doesn't exist because if gravity exists, then Newton's third law doesn't exist. So Newton is either a genius or he's making conflicting laws. Remember, the third law says equal and opposite. Gravity says it's no longer equal and opposite. It now has a, more of a pulling effect than the reversal of the pulling effect. Of, I don't know what you guys would think of it as the, the one that holds the apple up. And the gravity's pulling down, and somehow the apple can't hold up anymore. The forces that were resisting it no longer can hold up. So it pulls the apple out of the tree. Well, that's ridiculous. It's a stem. The apple got so much moisture, so much weight. The stem can only hold so much weight as it matures. And you don't need this, this feeding this apple forever in nature. So the apple is designed with the stem. It's designed it, it will break free at a certain weight. It will no longer be able to hold its own weight, and it just rips free, no harm to the tree, and off it goes from the stem. It's simple as that. Newton didn't understand stems of an apple, obviously. All right? It's not a darn apple just gravity pulling the apple down. It's just filling up with moisture. The apple's getting larger, and off it goes. It's simple as that's your apple, okay? So, so this is all wrong also. There's not just compression up there. There's compression and tension up there. There's the third law. It's, it's equal. He's just wrong about gravity. You know, he never could prove it. He made it clear he couldn't prove it. If you guys look it up, Newton could never prove gravity. He's the inventor of it. He couldn't prove it. So what makes you think you guys can improve it? You just prove it. You just accept it as a fact. You guys are like listening to uh, the news channels, just accepting stuff for facts. Grow up. So now back to the top drawing again. The top drawing, as this deflects down, this section here. Okay, so it's not... Okay, there we go. So you see me getting thicker up there. That's a, that, As that deflects down, there's a rotation. The rotation, right? There's the rotation arrow right there. It pulls on the top steel, compresses on the bottom steel. That creates a force multiplier like a 
pry bar or a hammer, if you will, right? Uh, let's see. A rocking effect, being able to pull the steel out from the bottom, uh, compress the steel at the bottom is the anchor point, rotating it out at the top. It's just a force multiplier, the uh, leverage, the leverage action. Why doesn't it pull way over here? Well, because uh, the deck sags and it met a rigid point. It met the more rigid point of here. And that's what they call the capital or or the punching shear protection or whatever you want to call it. It's the more rigid point. And that's where the rotation starts to take place at because it can't pull back anymore. The sagging, the sagging identified itself at that location. So here's the location here. That's location, right? There's location. And that location would be there, would be this outside edge. In some cases, such as uh, the Champlain, the, it, 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 none of the, this didn't work. This securement here did not work, what I call the wrap. It didn't work to make a capital. It just chose it right down the middle pretty much, or maybe on one side, but it just fractured it and pulled it off. There was no securement, good enough securement to the capital head, to the column heads. They use what I call the rab rabbit ears, right? A little rabbit ears were just one, two, was it maybe four of them there? Four? As you look at the top view, there were four. One this way, two this way, and then here's the column. That's the top view looking down, bird's eye view. As a side profile view right here, we see it as the, like that. It's just not enough to, uh, to engage and make a capital head. Now, the capital head on this, on that same structure, could, it, you know, we, we don't quite see it, but it could have, you know, the, what was it said, 19 5 eighths and 16 5 eighths. Well, that's really nice, but it still has to be secured to the, to the column. So you still got to secure it to the column. That's just the, the decking. It's not secured to the column. Not secured to the column until you secure it to the column. And how do you secure it with the column? I just mentioned it. It's the two... It's the two rabbit ears, right? The rabbit ears. Let's see. So I go like this. That's how you secure the mat there with the little ears. In this case, they use four ears. Remember, four ears. One, two, three, four. The four ears weren't enough. It was engaged. A lot of those ears were engaged. You see the ears. Some of them, uh, the steel when it when it broke broke apart, might have grabbed part of this ears right here. And ripped it down and caused some spalling, similar to the back wall. I don't know if it was ever grabbed. I think the steel went across the head and drug it over. I have a video on that where I talk about it by the pool deck area. By the uh, hot tub area, I show how the steel was there and pulled it over. Let me do this. Okay. So this video is more so... Sorry, that was a quiet sneeze. And if you look at that, it's called a cribriform plate. Cribriform plate. That's all I was doing. I had something on my cribriform plate that my body decided I need to clean it off. And that's what a sneeze does. Look up cribriform plate. You'll be disgusted by it the way it looks inside the human body. Um, you will be, not me. I think it's beautiful. Um, and that's all that happened there. So, let me pause this. Again, so same content, same uh, page. We have our capitals, okay, that's real rigid. We have, that's a critical shear zone, if you will. And then the column is the continuous low path down to wherever you're going. Pure caps down to foundation, down to wherever's stable where they, where they don't, they don't, uh, um, uh, I'm going to, it's going to play around, but I want, where they don't, um, I'm trying to think of a common word, sink, sink for you. Well, they don't sink anymore, okay? It's on a, a stable soil surface or a stable surface, however you got there. Okay, then there's another column head, um, critical shear zone. You call them uh, capitals, etc. And then remember, this is this, the span is really broken up into these, into what I call the rigid, rigid, rigid zones or rigid, zones of rigidity or non-rigidity. So now you have the two. I'm overlaying what's down here above. All right. So I'm superimposing it above. 
So between it where it says DC right here, and I'll remove that. That area there between at that area there, between our 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 um, our heads, our capital heads, is a slab, right? And this slab, based on loading, let's put a little vehicle up there, perhaps. Well, it looks like we got a large vehicle. It will want to deflect, and when it deflects, right? There's your deflection. So I'm going to do that. It creates two rotations. Newton's third law: a counter rotation and a counter rotation. If they, if it's say it's in equilibrium, balance to deflect between these two equally. The car is there, it's not forward or not. But the the this this half of the this half of the span and the car is loaded more to the front here. This is the front, so it automatically doesn't work. Um, but I'm going to show you that the let me change colors again. And let's go with that one. That on the left side of that line I put down there, your rotation is like that. On the right side, the rotation is like that. Can you see it? As this goes down, you're getting your, your kind of rotations. And at the at this section here, you're getting your rotations. They look like um, that from this from this viewpoint. From this viewpoint, it's going down, it's rotating that way, pulling away from the top, and the same thing with pulling away from the top. And your rotation looks like that. So what's going on in the middle here? What's going on in the middle? In the middle, you're getting a counter, counter rotation wanting to open up the bottom. So let's do, this is the deck going across and let me come this way and I'm going to V it like that and it's doing that see it right there right here so at the right there is where we're getting the the uh, tension trying to open up and compression up here in the top steel okay so when you look up and you use your eyes looking up so this is us looking up two eyes oh wait a minute so look, I don't know how to do an eyeball let's do an eyeball okay so, so when you look up, eyeball here, I guess EB, right? Eyeball there, you see a crack in the ceiling. It's between, it's in the, it's in the I'm going to delete this and I'm going to give you a ziggly line. It's right there in the tributary area, right down the center between this one and this one. But, but remember... It can be offset by a bit based on the column's location, offset in the, in the loading. So let me go back out. So then you come out 1980 and you see those cracks and you're like, huh, well, we got to close those cracks up. Let's put foam in them. All you did was lock it in place where all it can do is keep rotating downwards. It no longer can rebound back once you put the foam in it. Any rebounding is done. It now has a, a something filled in here, a void, filled in. You filled it in. And now it can't go back. The deck can't bounce back up for any for whatever reason. So it even depends if they had cars on it. The flexion was in there when they when they when they did it. Did they lift it up and attempt to to uh, to uh, level the deck? It, it wouldn't be the repair anyway, because you need to stop that deflection. You basically need. So let me back way out of this. You basically need this knot area here to deflect just so much and then stay there. And when I say deflect a bit, because we don't want this in shear, just straight shear where it can literally just drop down like an like an, like this whole pad can just go down like an elevator. Because then it's just a matter of the steel that it wants to just shear across. That, that steel works better in, in, in tension by pulling on it. And to get it to pull on the steel, You've got to get a slight deflection, just enough to activate the steel by the slight deflection, and, and that's, just, that's, just, that's it. And you don't want to work it out full range, so you don't want it to deflect and then load it. And, and Well, if you load it, if it deflects and you load it and you get more deflection, well, then you're, 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 you're overloading the steel or you're cycling it. And then you take the vehicle off and then it relaxes, comes back. You're cycling the steel. 
you don't really want to do that and you're cycling the concrete margin steel specifically you just want enough where it's where I'm trying to get you to see it where the concrete that's rebar and the concrete's just pulling on it and putting this in the steel itself in tension with the bond of, the, of there so just a little bit of deflection not not a whole lot and 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 without that without that you'd want the steel that goes out of here let's say it's dowled you want the steel if you could do this and it was going to come down like an elevator you'd want this steel to be so rigid uh, so strong and sheer that it would not move down that it, and this deck would not deflect that's the other option that this section of the deck doesn't deflect and your loads can't shear the steel that's here they can't just shear it by you know double shear or bypass it and cut it it's, it just won't happen the concrete won't shear it anyway but the uh, um, so then uh, okay so we got a, a dowels in there just trying to show you but re remember this that if you see that like that and you load it there and it's trying to go down it's creating a uplift over here a, 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 a torque there it will want to try to if but unless it could stay rigid if you can keep this all rigid then any force that's applied here that's that that will not cause deflection will just be a driving force down the columns that's the end of the video this is where I needed to get to I know it's kind of uh it's inside my head I'm trying to put it out here for you to see it so it's kind of uh, and I'm doing in this one-off video here it takes many many steps to get to it this is sort of the cutting to the chase, giving you it to you, and then I got to give you all the background videos, the small videos to get us back to here. But this is the one that does the reveal, and then all the other content I show with the little models I'll be showing in videos coming up, saying, "Look at this!" It'll be five and a six minute video. It'll just be steps to help you understand this this video, and even that was next, was going to be part of the video that cross. Okay, crisscross. All right, hopefully this will help you. Um, all right, so you know what? I, I think I want to show you one more. It's the same thing. It's this uh, tapered design you see in the middle. Same thing. No, no harm, no foul. Still the same deal. Um, oh, there's a description. Which is better? Shear caps versus drop panel versus column caps. Um, slab stiffness enhanced. Shear caps, no. Drop panel, yes. Um, column... Uh, capitals no okay ceiling height good um, let's see buildability column capitals are poor reinforcement tonnage that's weight of steel concrete volume volume so which one are they saying is the best it looks like they're trying to say drop panels uh, there is no it's all about deflection and your your force multipliers, your rotation, how much rotation you're getting, and your cracks will all identify that. You start getting cracks, and it's starting to tell you what's going on with the deck. So this is kind of a, a fluid system. I'm not for it, just so you know. I'm not for it. I'm just giving you showing you the true behaviors of it. Unless you're gonna build this beautiful thing like down oh there's the parking garage part. Yeah. Unless you're gonna do the the uh, something like that and that's you know Melbourne University campus in North and the film Mad Max okay um, yeah so let's end it with this one again so here is that capital right the the uh, shear protection and it's equivalent to having a, a larger column even though it's the column in the background a smaller one even though that's there, the small deal. Because this is what literally what we see was left behind. It has the it had the effect of giving the larger column. This 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 capital gave the effect of being fully supported underneath, as if a column was there. All the way down to the foundation. You know, it's so rigid. This is the effect it had, and everything outside of there was was connected to it, and that was the slab. 
and everything outside broke free from this section. And there's a small version of it there. And so it'll be a much smaller um, extrapolation out to the column as I talk about out to here. That's what you're basically looking at. And your rotation, um, your rotation, your sagging took place out here, which incorrectly um, engineers refer to it as punching shear. And it looks like that, arrow straight down, without talking about the rotation, the sagging of the deck causing this force multiplier issue there. Okay, so I'm going to end this video. You, under, you understand, well, hopefully this concept will get to you. I'll give it more and more and more and show it to you more and more videos and then you'll understand um, that this whole punch sharing capital thing is just wrong. Just wrong. It's all about the deflection, the cracks, and you've got to really let those cracks talk to you. When you see the crack, you got to realize you're also seeing some rotation somewhere and you need to start dealing with it. A rotation, a sagging, a sagging is a rotation. All right, uh, I guess I'll end it with that. Let's do that. You know, I get to change my mind. Here's the, here's the deck. Let's do the deck again. So a sagging has a rotation in it. Remember, divide it in the middle, and you're going to see the rotation. Okay. So a sagging has rotation. So it's all about the rotation, baby. And that rotation is a force multiplier, not just here, not just in the center part, but the two wings, the two outer, not just not just here, but there's some rotation going on. Each one of the connections here. And then it, and those connections are for this slab, but also for this one's receiving a different moment, a different, you know, a force multiplier, just like in here. Just like these guys doing this. That's taking place out here, out here. And in the background, it would be taking place here, 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 all the surfaces. Here, 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 all the surfaces. It took place here, all across this surface on the ground. It took place everywhere. Now, this one just might have flat, fell down. It might have actually, you know, they, they see, the, see the open, the uh, reinforcement? This looks like, you know, I, I would theorize that, that the, uh, that this piece was up here, that this, might have looked like that and then we get this almost clean break um i can't tell this rebar right here and here where where it is it, this is kind of funky because I, I state that only because i see such clean um reinforcement right here and usually that's one of my rotation points when i see that as you can see reinforcement right there in this little window right there that's reinforcement right here you see it when that rotation takes place then you get you can get that and love you guys hopefully this won't, won't kill you that it won't uh, be too troublesome again I'll, I'll stack this for you bye